So I got these Dell R620 PowerEdge servers a while ago, and I've been debating what I'm going to do with them. And this weekend, I decided to start messing around with them, updating BIOS and stuff. And I realized that most of the applications that I would be using these servers for would be running on ZFS. And that presents a problem for me. I forgot that Dell servers have an integrated RAID controller that can't just, like you have to do RAID, you can't just use it as an HBA. So I'm in a little bit of a pickle. I could just straight up put in one of my spare LSI HBAs, but if I do that, I won't have enough to put my external HBA to connect to a data shelf and also a 10 gigabit NIC. So what am I to do? Well, I did some digging, and it turns out you can totally flash the RAID card uh, with IT mode firmware that basically just turns it to an HBA. So that's what we're doing here today. I apologize if this video isn't going to be very well scripted or scripted at all, honestly. This is going to be kind of a vlog style thing. Uh, things are going to happen, and we're going to try and uh, see what happens. So the first thing I need to do is I need to open this bad boy up and I need to take the battery off of the RAID controller because this will present us some issues. So yeah, this battery here we need to, I've got it unplugged from the actual uh, board here, but I'm gonna try and take it off because I don't like batteries being around hot things and not being used. Uh, but this thing caches the RAID information on the card. It's basically like a CMOS for the uh, RAID card. So we want to take that off. It's not going to be used anyway, so we're just going to go ahead and pop this off. All right, she seems to be in place now. I think all the pins are connected on the bottom side. The battery is removed. So now we can just put the top back on uh, very loosely and we can begin doing some actual configuration stuff. Hooray! So the website that I found this information for flashing the IT mode is fodisha.com. Uh, I'll have a link in the description somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, but the crux of this is that it provides you a zip file with two disk images. Uh, and those disk images are uh, a FreeDOS image and a Linux uh, image. So I've slapped both of those images onto my uh, Ventoys boot USB. Hello cat. So yes, I've, I've thrown them onto my Ventoys disk and I'm gonna start by booting into the FreeDOS image and we will go from there. By the way, if you're not using Ventoy, you should really be using Ventoy. It's the only USB bootable stick you'll ever need. It's great. You can just copy your ISOs to it and it just works. You know what? That's my fault. I shouldn't have praised Ventoy. There's some kind of mem disk error, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to write this ISO with Rufus. <sighs> Damn it. Finally, we're here. So now we just run info and we have a perk H710 mini and I need to take note of that SAS address. Good thing I'm making a video about this stuff. And then we can pretty much just hang out at our desk for a minute because we got to go to the guide on that website I was talking about earlier. I'll see you there. Okay, it looks like we need to clean out the card reboot into the Linux image that's on that zip thing and then we go from there. So that said D1 cross. D1 cross. Let me double check. That says D1 cross. D1 cross. Okay. H710 D1 mini. H710 1 D1. Yep. Uh, if your card is not blah, blah blah otherwise hit enter. Well, I have triple checked this so if I break it, it's my fault Press any key to clean adapter flash. Where is the any key? Ha 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 ha. I'm sure none of you have heard that before And now we just sit here and uh, Do sweet FA. I will see you when this is done 
Looks like she's done. So we got to press the any key again, not showing you where that is on the keyboard. And then we need to reboot in that Linux image. So I have to write that Linux image, <laughs> write that Linux image, excuse me, uh, to that same drive because I've only got one USB drive on me. <sighs> All right, I'll see you back shortly. Oh, wait, nope, nope. Evidently, we're erasing more more stuff. Okay. Cool, it runs two cleanings. Okay. Well, when this is done, I'll do what I said a second ago. All right. Again, I'll see you when we boot into Linux and go from there. And I'm wrong, yet again. Now we press the any key one more time to write IT mode. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm an idiot. I've never done this before, so uh, forgive me. Uh, don't see any errors. I must press any key, then reboot. Okay. Whee! Alright, we're booted in successfully. I've got the IP address. I'm going to go back to my desk, SSH into it from there. That way I can just copy and paste this crap. Okay, so now we need to just su into the root user. Okay, we're root now, and then we need to run this command here. And boop. Errors above are normal. And now we just wait for this, I think. And then we'll reboot it again. And according to this, it sounds like uh, we'll have to reboot twice. Because uh, there will be a kernel panic after the first reboot. Uh, we'll see if that remains true. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, get back to you when this is done. Alright, we got everything done. So now we're just rebooting everything. And uh, we should encounter that kernel panic. And then we got to program our SAS address back. So... Hell yeah, almost done. I don't seem to have gotten the kernel panic, so I'm just gonna count that as a win. So I'm gonna take this IP address, go back to my machine, and continue following that guide. Okay, so we're back in, and I have gone to root user, and we're setting the SAS address to that one we saw back on the uh, FreeDOS image when we ran info. Uh, error. Programming SAS address failed. Okay. Let me see if I typed that in wrong. Yep, just an idiot and typed it wrong. So this should work. SAS address successfully programmed. Resetting adapter. Finish processing command successfully. Exiting SAS to flash. Cool. We have the SAS address back. Cool. So if we run info, we have all of our crap. So our firmware product ID is IT mode. We're using LSI firmware. That's kind of amusing. Okay. Um. Okay, so I'm going uh, to keep reading through this guide and see if there's anything else I need to do. Yes, so I'm going to be booting off of some SSDs uh, that will be plugged into this card through the back plane. So I do need to run two additional commands to flash boot images for BIOS boot mode and UEFI. Uh, might as well do both. There's no harm in doing both. So, yeah. All right, so let's just run that. Okay, that was easy. And let's run that one. And we're good to go. Okay, so now since all that crap is done, I think we are clear to test out some, I don't know, uh, let's run an Ubuntu server install just to see if it works. 
so just for fun, I put in the two discs that came with the thing here, with that former RAID array, whatever this application was that ran on the server. And uh, I ran a Proxmox install, or started to, just because that's in all likelihood what I would wind up installing on this anyway. And it sees both discs uh, independently instead of one virtual disc from the RAID controller, so... Uh, yeah, I think we're good to go here. Uh, I think that was a success. Now I just got to do it to the uh, RAID controller on the bottom server, which is the one I'll actually be using for things in the future. But I wanted to test on this one since this is a two-bay. If it breaks, uh, So, yeah, that was a successful little uh, adventure. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll do more of these, like, loose vlog type videos usually I try to do more I don't know useful things but I, I don't know this this would seem like a kind of quick and easy thing I was going to be doing today and it was kind of fun so if you want to see more of this let me know if you don't tell me this video is terrible and I should go kill myself all right thank you and good night